The following is a Sunday feast lecture given by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada recorded on May 21st 1972 in Los Angeles. So, this is the true picture of God. Jai Radha Madhav. <clears throat> Jai Radha Madhava Punya Bihari. Oh. He is simply enjoying Radha Madhava. You have seen the picture. Radha Krishna. Oh. So, eternally engaged in enjoyment. In the association of the gopis, gopijana ballava. And his only business is how to please the gopis. Just like here, in this material world, the <coughs> young boy who loves a young girl, he tries to please the girl always. This is natural, oh. because originally uh, the same thing is there in God. It is a pleasure. It is a pleasure for the uh, male to please the female counterpart. Uh, that is originally created. Radha Krishna Pranaya Vikiti Alladini Shakti. Uh, this Radha Krishna love affairs uh, is the originally there. Radharani, the female counterpart, is the manifestation of Allahadini Shakti, pleasure potency of the Supreme Personality of God. He has got many potencies. Parasha Shakti Vividhaiva Sriyate. God, God means with His potencies. Just like ordinarily we are part and parcel of God, a minute particle, still we have got so many potencies. Every man, every living entity, not only man, the animals also, they have got various potencies. Creative energy. So, you just imagine how much creative energies and potencies are there in God. This is the understanding. If I am a little portion, part and parcel of God, I have got so much potencies, uh, I mean the human being, or even animal, there are many animals, they have got, just like a bird, he can fly in the sky without any mechanical arrangement. He has got the potency. You cannot. If you want to fly in the sky, then you have to make some machine. But a small insect he is flying very freely. Uh, Without any mechanics. You cannot make such a small machine like an insect. That is not. But God has given him potency, although as a very insignificant small ant, insect, or you can very freely fly. You cannot live within the water. Uh, if you want to live with the, within the water, you have to make so many arrangements, submarine and this and that, so many things. But a small fish doesn't care, even the ocean, fly. A small fish, uh, 
When I was walking on the beach of Hawaii, uh, uh, what, is, what is that animal in many... Uh, crab. So, when we are walking, they are flying towards the sea. Uh, he has got instinct or reason that somebody is coming, he may kill me. So, uh, let me have shelter of the Pacific Ocean. The crab is not going this side to the forest because he knows certain that the forest cannot give me shelter. The Pacific Ocean can give me shelter. This is psychology. Uh, I never seen the crab is going this side, forest side. It is going to the Pacific Ocean side. And so far I am concerned, as soon as the waves are coming, I am going away from the ocean, although I am human being. I cannot take shelter of the Pacific Ocean, because I am not the potency. So in this way, you have to study. We are samples of God, uh, part and parcel. Uh, just like you take little sample from the Pacific Ocean, a drop of water, you can taste it, and it is salty, you can understand. The whole water is salty. Similarly, living entities, they are sample of God, small, very small. You can create one Sputnik or jet plane, and you take so much credit, oh, I am flying in the sky. Why don't you give credit to God? Who is flying, flying millions of Sputniks in the sky? Not small, with so many mountains, seas, uh, houses, uh, trees, plants, and so many. You can see so many the sun planet, the moon planet, and other, so many other. Koti su vasudhati vibhuti bhinnam. Ah. In each and universe, every universe, there are millions of planets. Koti Vasudhadi. Vasudha means planet. Jasya prabha prabhavato jagadanna koti koti su asesa vasudhadi vibhuti bhinnam tad brahma niskala manantam asesa bhutam Govindamadi Purisam Tamang Bhajan. The Brahma Jyoti Jasa Prabha is the bodily effulgence of God, Krishna, Govind. So on that effulgence, uh, Jagadana Koti, there are innumerable universes. It is not very difficult to understand. Just like you see, in the sun's side, innumerable planets are floating. So what is the difficulty to understand? That there is a signing, effulgence from the body of God, Krishna, and in that signing, effulgence, innumerable universes are floating. What is the difficulty? There is no difficulty. It is most scientific proposal. So these are the potencies of God. Not that I can show some magic and immediately I become God. They see the magic, real magic of God. Don't accept cheap God. God must show godly magic. Just like we are showing little magic floating some aeroplane or Sputnik or jet in the sky, you are taking so much credit. So much credit, the scientists are declaring, there is no God, I am God. Because I have made this aeroplane. 
And what is your yellow plate in comparison to these uh, planets? Uh, so intelligent person, they will give more credit to God than to these scientists and philosophers. Uh, because he can see the potencies. How much potency is there? Uh, so he has many potencies. In the Vedic literature we can understand parasa shakti vividaiva siyate in the Vedas, Upanishad. Natasya kājyam karanam chavidyate. God has nothing to do personally. Natasya kājyam karanam chavidyate. Natasya sama odhikasya drishyate. Nobody is found equal to Him or greater than Him. Nobody. That is God. Uh, if somebody is competitor, one god competitor, another god competitor, just then nowadays it has become a fashion to become god, and there are competition between one god to another. But actually nobody can compete with god. That is god. Natasya sama. Sama means equal. Odikastra, uh, or greater. That means everyone subordinate. Everyone subordinate. Everyone is lower than God. He may be very powerful, but nobody can be equal or greater than God. That is the Vedic information. Natasya sama odikastra dishyati. Don't find. They are also a great saintly person. They are researching that who is the greatest personality. Uh, greatest personality. So by research work, by great saintly person, uh, especially by Lord Brahma, he is the first creature within this universe. Uh, so he has found by his spiritual advancement and research work, that Krishna is the greatest. Ishara Parama Krishna. He gives his decision. Uh, the greatest personality is Krishna. Uh, just like we are sitting, so many ladies and gentlemen here, we can analyze who is the greatest here. So, say for uh, arguing, you can accept that you are the greatest. But I am not the greatest. I have got my spiritual master. He has got his spiritual master. He has got his spiritual master. In this way, we go up to Brahma. Brahma is the original spiritual master within this universe. Uh, who gave us the Vedic knowledge. He is therefore called forefather, uh, grandfather, Pitama. But he is also not independent. In the Vedanta, in the Vedanta Sutra, Bhagavad, it is said that Brahma is the first creature. There was no other, any other living entity when he was created first. So, if I say that he also got knowledge from others, then the argument may be who is the next person to give him knowledge. So, therefore Bhagavad says, no, he received knowledge from Krishna. How? From the heart. Tene Brahma Rida. Rida. Because God, Krishna is sitting in everyone's heart. Your heart, my heart, everyone. Uh, and He can give you instruction. His name is therefore uh, Chaitya Guru. Chaitya Guru means who gives conscience 
and knowledge from within. And the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, ah, Sarvasya-chāhaṁ ridhi-sannivishtya. In everyone's heart I am sitting. Ridhi, within the heart. Sannivishtya, I am sitting there. Sarvasya, not only you and me, even animals, insects, birds, bees, Brahma, everyone. Sarvas, all living creatures. So, sarvasya chāhaṁ ridhi sanni vishya matta from me smiti jñāna apo hanancha Remembrance, knowledge and forgetfulness. Forgetfulness also. If you want to forget God, God will give you intelligence that you can forget God forever. He is so kind. Whatever you want, He will give you intelligence. Do like this. So there are two things. There are two living entities. One is trying to forget God and another is trying to uh, remember God. That's all. There are two kinds of people or uh, men, men, not the animals. Animals cannot understand what is God. It is the business of human being. So, if you want to know God sincerely, seriously, then God is within yourself. He will give you intelligence how you can know Him. But if you want to forget God, challenge God, there is no God, God is dead, then He will give you such intelligence that you always think that there is no God, there is, God is dead, that, like that. Uh, you will give uh, some arguments. There are so many atheists, they are also putting their arguments. That where from the argument comes? It comes from God. Uh, that you take this argument and forget God forever. Matta smiti jnana ma pohanancha. Vedaisya sadvai ahameva vedyam. The Vedic knowledge means to understand God. That's all. One who has understood God, he has studied all Vedas. Finished. And one who has not understood God, simply studying this literature, that literature, that scripture, that he is simply wasting his time. That's all. Because ultimate knowledge is God. If one cannot understand what is God after so much education, then Bhagavad says, Samayeva hi kevalam, it is simply labor, labor, waste of time. Simply, waste of time. There is no education. Education, knowledge means ultimately to understand, to know what is God. Uh, <coughs> actually, not fictitiously, vaguely. Uh, so there are many classes of men who have no understanding of God. Some of them are saying God is dead or God is impersonal, there is no God, zero, I am God, you are God. So many things. All these people do not know what is God. Therefore there are different theories. Therefore somehow or other, if you can understand God, then your life is successful. Somehow or other. Because this human life is especially meant for understanding God. Athata Brahma Jignasa, the Vedanta Sutra. You have heard the name of Vedanta. Vedanta means, Veda means knowledge. And Anta means ultimate. The ultimate knowledge. Uh, 
Therefore, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Veda is the Sarvai, Ahameva Vedya. The ultimate purpose of reading Vedas is to know me. So, who can read Vedanta philosophy? Very learned scholar, he must be. At least he must be very learned scholar in Sanskrit. He must have sufficient brain substance to understand what are these Vedanta sutras, because everything is there in a small aphorism. Just like the first aphorism of Vedanta sutra is, Athato Brahma Jigyasa, ah, three words, Atha, Atha, Brahma Jigyasa, four words. So it contains volumes of philosophy. The next aphorism is Janma Adya Sajataha Janma Adi Asya Jataha From whom Asya Vishasya of this universe, cosmic manifestation, from where this cosmic manifestation has come and where it rests and where it will dissolve. Janmātdasya-jataha. In this way, Vedānta Sutra means, uh, gives you the whole purpose of Veda, knowledge, in small code words. So to understand these code words, one must have very big brain uh, or very highly standard educational qualification. Then uh, all the acharyas, uh, uh, those who are controlling Vedic civilization, like Sankaracharya, Madhyacharya, Ramanacharya, they are uh, all written, their commentaries, on the Vedanta Sutra. Because unless one explains Vedanta Sutra, he will not be accepted as an authorized acharya. He is not, not that anyone can become acharya. He must give explanation of the Vedanta Sutra, prasthanatra. There is a system. So, Ultimately, Vedanta Sutra, as Krishna says, Veda is the Sarvai. Sarvai means including Vedanta Sutra. Veda is the Sarvai, Aham Eva Vedyam. I am to be understood. Why? Ah. Vedanta Krit, Vedanta Bhit Cha Aham. Vedanta Krit. I am the compiler of Vedanta Sutra. The Vedanta Sutra was compiled by Vyasdev. He is incarnation of Krishna. Dvipayan of Vyas. So therefore, it is compiled by his incarnation. So it is compiled by him. Because his incarnation, he is the same. So, Vedanta Krit when we are compiler of the Vedanta, and the compiler of the compiler of the Vedanta is Vedanta Bhit, one who knows Vedanta. Because I have written some book, so I know what is the purpose of writing my book. You cannot know. My purpose, you cannot know. There is a a small instructive story in this, not story, fact, in this connection. <coughs> in Calcutta, there was a great dramatist. He was a very well-known government officer. He wrote one book, Sajaha. That is very famous book for theoretical play. So in that Sajaha, means the king emperor Sajahan, the uh, practically the name which is given on the book, the hero title, he is the hero. 
So one of the friends of Mr. D. L. Rai, he inquired from Mr. Rai that in your book, Sajahan, the actual hero is Aurangzeb. Or why you have given the title Sajahan? He could not understand it. So I am just trying to explain that the purpose of the book must be known to the author, not others. So the author replied, my dear friend, the actual hero is Sajahan, not Aurangzeb. Although the Sajahan book is full of activities of Aurangzeb. Uh, the fact is that Sajahan was the emperor. He had uh, many, uh, four or five sons, and uh, his wife died, Mumtaz, at an early age. You have seen, those who have gone to India, you have seen the Taj Mahal building. That building was constructed in the memory of that Mumtaj by Sajahan. He spent all his money for constructing that building. So it is one of the seven wonders of the world. So that Sajahan lost his wife at an early age. She was very fond of his wife. And because affectionate father, uh, he did not uh, very much uh, chastise his sons. And he spent all his money in constructing the memory of his wife. So when the sons grew up, the third son, Aurangzeb, came out very crooked. And he made a plan how to desert the emperor, empire. He killed his elder brother and other brothers. He arrested his father, Sajahan. Said, this is the book subject matter, Sajahan. So whole activities. But the author says that Aurangzeb is not the hero. Hero is Sajah. Uh, then he explained why. Now because uh, Sajahan was living, sitting in the Agra fort as a prisoner, and all the reactions of Aurangzeb's activities, killing of his other sons, usurping the empire, that was beating on his heart. Therefore he was suffering. He is the hero. So this is an example. The author of a book knows very well what is the purpose of that book. That is my statement. Similarly, this Vedanta Sutra was compiled by Vyasdev or Krishna's incarnation or Krishna himself. So he knows what is Vedanta Sutra. So if you want to understand Vedanta Sutra, then you must understand Krishna. Vedishta Sarvai Ahame Vedam. Krishna says also that, that by studying all the Vedic literature, one has to understand Krishna. And he also confirms, and Vasudev explains Vedanta Sutra in the Simad Bhagavatam. Because he knew that Vedanta Sutra, being authoritative version of Vedic literature, so many rascals will comment in different way. Therefore, I must leave. That was also done under the instruction of Narada. Uh, he wrote personally a commentary on the Vedanta Sutra, that is Simad Bhagavat. Bhasayam Brahma Sutrana. Vidartha Parivinghitam. This Srimad Bhagavatam is uh, the right commentary by the author himself. Uh, and the Vidartha Parivinghitam, the purpose of Vedas, the scheme of Vedic literature is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, uh, the human life, athāta brahma jīgyāsā, means, the Vedānta Sutra says, that this life, this human life, is meant for understanding 
God. Brahmaji Gaira. At least not understanding, at least inquiry. Jigyasa. Jigyasa means inquiry. So, where the inquiry should be made? Huh? If I want to inquire about God, shall I go to the storekeeper or drug shop or a motor uh, shop? No. Tad vijyanatham sa guru meva avijachit. If you want to know the transcendental science, then you must find out a guru. That is injunction. Jigyasu sri uttamam gurum prapadita tasmang prapadita gurum jigyasu sri uttamam if you are actually uh, inquisitive to understand higher science, uttamam, uttamam means higher. These are not higher science. How to earn some money? Earn some money and eat something and sleep and have some sex life and die. This is not higher science. This is not higher science. Higher science is Brahma Jigyasa. To inquire about Brahma. That is higher science. These signs, earning money and fulfilling the hungry belly, these signs, the birds and beasts also know how to do it. It does not require much education. There is no scientific education how to enjoy sex life. Everyone knows how to do it. Similarly, there is no need of scientific education how to eat or how to find out your food. The birds and beasts, they are also finding out and they are also eating. So these are not higher sciences. The higher science is to inquire, athāta brahma jīgyāsā, to inquire about God, the Supreme. And that can be done by the human being, not by other. Not the cats and dogs. So, if we do not give education of this higher science to the human society, if we keep them dumb about this, or if we make secular state prohibitive uh, in young hands to understand God, then it is an animal society. It is an animal society. So such things happen sometimes. Uh, so there is a narration of uh, King Bena. The King Bena happened to be an atheist king. Uh, so because that reason is given that his mother was the daughter of an atheist king. Naranang Matulakrama. It is a scientific fact that a son inherits the quality of the mother and a daughter inherits the quality of father. So the king's Bena's mother inherited the quality of her father and the Bena, King Bena, inherited the quality of grandfather or mother. So he was an atheist king. Atheist king. When he became king, he was very powerful, strong, but atheist. So when he became king, because he was very powerful, he declared by drum beating, what is that? Na jastabhyam, na dātabhyam, na hotabhyam, dija kachit, iti na bārayat dharmaṁ bheri ghosena sarvata. 
Very Ghoshana means by sound of bugle. Formerly, when there was some declaration uh, by the king, by the government, uh, one should go in the marketplace, uh, the government man, and take a drum and, and one bugle, and they will uh, declare, uh, this is the law from this day, that's all. No more gazette. So this is the old system. Some are still existing. So the Bela king declared that these are all nonsense. What is this? No just tabbyam, no more worship of God, no more sacrifice, no dātabhaṁ, no more charity. Stop all this. No dātabhaṁ, no hūtabhaṁ, no more offering oblation to the fire, sacrifice. Dija kachitis. This business was meant for the brāhmaṇas, therefore dija. He is restricting the brāhmaṇas, so don't do all this nonsense anymore. Dija kachit. Iti nabāraya dharmam. In this way, he stopped our all religious activities. Very ghosena sarvata. So formerly, the king was controlled by saintly person, by priestly order. They would give the king advice. The Vedic society is divided into four classes of men. It is confirmed in the Bhagavad-gītā. Chātur varnaṁ maya sistam guna karma vibhāgaṣa. According to quality and work, there are four divisions of men. The brāhmaṇ, the intelligent class of men, the chhatriyas, the administrative class of men, the martial class of men, and the vaiśyas, the productive class of men, and the śūdras, the worker class of men. That is still existing in a different name. But the difficulty is the classification is not made according to quality and work. That was the actual position of classification. Nowadays, a śūdra is on the government. A person who is a nonsense number one, he has no knowledge, he is on the head of the government. The things have been stopped. A person uh, on religious category, uh, he is advocating something, oh, it is not to be uttered. Uh, homosex. You see? He is advocating homo homosex. Just see. This has been topsy turvy. The four classes of men are there still. But the third class, fourth class man is taking the place of first class. And the first class man is out, uh, kicked out. Go out. Don't talk of God. This is the position at the present moment. The classes are there. Ah, that is natural. There must be some first-class man. There must be some second-class man. There must be some third-class man. There must be some fourth-class man. But the difficulty is that the fourth-class man is taking the position of first-class man, and the first-class man is being kicked up. Therefore, there are so many problems in the society. Gunakarma vibhagasa. First class man must be acting first class. But he is acting last class, but he is posed in first class. Things have been topsy-tied. So it is the duty of the government to find out 
the first class man and employ him for first class business, for first class activities. And what is that first class activity? The first class activity is athato brahma jiggasa. That is first class activity. Otherwise it is fourth class activity. If the human society is not divided into right order, chātur-varna-maya system guna vibhāgas. And it is the duty of the government to see that the first class man is employed in first class activities, the second class man is engaged in second class activities, then the government will be nice. Now here the Beno Maharaj, he is on the head of the administration, royal king. Now he is advising uh, reject religion, no more charity, no more sacrifice, no more worship, stop all this nonsense. Then what is the condition of the society? Uh, <coughs> that is being done. So it will take some time to explain uh, <coughs> about this activities of first class, second class, third class man. Uh, it is a great science. So we shall try to explain one after another. You please come on Sunday. I shall hold this class uh, for the time being. Excuse me. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Next is a class from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Second Canto, Third Chapter, Text Number Four, given by His Divine Grace A. C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on May twenty fourth, nineteen seventy two, in Los Angeles. Translation. One who desires to be absorbed in the impersonal Brahma Jyoti effulgent should worship the master of the Vedas, Lord Brahma, or Brihaspati, the learned priest. One who desires powerful sex should worship the heavenly king, Indra. And one who desires good progeny should worship the great progenitors, all the Prajapatis. One who desires good fortune should worship Durga Devi, or the superintendent of the material world. One desiring to be very powerful should worship fire. And one who aspires after money only should worship the Vasus. One should worship the root reincarnation of Lord Shiva if he wants to be a great hero. One who wants a large stock of grain should worship Aditi. One who worships, who desires a worldly kingdom should worship Vishwadev. And one who wants to be popular with the general mass of population should worship the Sadhya of Demigod. So, these are the problems. Oh, we have to seek exactly like that. It's like government departments. If you want to have this, you have to go to a particular department. Building department, water department, so many electric department many departments, tax department, income tax department, support tax department. Babhusādhikvā buddhi ekiha kurunandana bahusākājhanantāścha buddhi abhyavusāyina. So, there are many statements in the Bhagavad-gītā that in Indian villages still, uh, there are different wells. One well is meant for washing dishes. Another well is meant for <coughs> taking bath. Another well is meant for washing cloth. Another well is meant for drinking water. So Krishna says, there are 
different ways for different purposes. But when you go to the river, all the purposes will be served. You can wash your dishes, you can wash your cloth, you can take bath, and then you take drinking water. Similarly, uh, all these desires, of course a devotee has no material desire, unless one is free from all these material desires. These are all material desires. Somebody wants to be powerful, somebody wants to possess well, somebody wants to have beautiful wife, somebody wants to possess grains and worldly kingdom. There is no limit of our desires. And there are department also. You can fulfill your desires. Janti deva brata devan, pitrin janti pitri brata. So this is kindness, mercy of Krishna, that uh, He has given you facility if you want to fulfill your desire. But all of them are kama. In each, every line, the word is used, kama. We have marked it. Yeah, just like Annadya Kamastu Aditi Annadya Anna means grains. There are different kinds of grains. Uh, there is also one term. Annadya Kamastu uh, Kama. But you won't find here uh, a meat eater. No. That is not at all. That is average. That is not for human being. Anna, you can desire Anna, grains. You can desire to become king. You can desire to have nice wife. These are natural. But there is not a single sentence here you'll find that desiring to eat meat, egg, flesh, no. That is beyond human jurisdiction. They are not meant for human being. <clears throat> so these are the different departments. If you want to take facility of quickly getting some benefit, Jajanti iha devata kāṅkhantaṁ karmanāṁ siddhi karmanāṁ siddhi jajanti iha devata For particular type of fulfillment of your desire, you can worship the particular type of demigod. This is recommended in the śāstra for the uh, less intelligent class of men, uh, still it may be questioned that why Vedas have, if the ultimate goal is to reach the Supreme Personality of Godhead, why the Vedas have prescribed a different demigod worship? Yes. Uh, that is replied in the Bhagavad Gita. Tad bhavati alpa Those who are less intelligent, for them, uh, not for the first class intelligence. Those who are Krishna conscious, they are first class intelligent. They don't want anything beyond Krishna. That's all. Uh, they don't want to know anything except Krishna. The advantage is if you can know Krishna, then you know everything. And if you get Krishna, you get everything. Therefore, this conclusion, uh, 
cannot be perceived by less intelligent class. Exactly like that. If one is intelligent, he goes to the river from the village and he takes their bath. River water is never contaminated because constantly the wave is flowing. Suppose he contaminate a certain portion, but it does not stand. It flows down immediately. Immediately, moment after moment, you are getting pure water. And especially in India, in India there are so many nice rivers, uh, uh, Ganges, Jamuna, Godavari, Kaveri, Krishna, Sindh. Hmm. There are many rivers. Uh, all very nice water. In the Western country I have seen only one river, very nice, in Montreal. What is that river? Saint Lawrence. Saint, yes. All other rivers I have seen, they are very unclean, especially in Moscow, Hambar. Uh, it is so dirty. <coughs> So uh, in India the rivers are very clean uh, and people take uh, pleasure in taking bath in rivers. Uh, if there is river, nobody will take bath at home. Uh, they will go all to the river. And it is very refreshing that you know. <coughs> so this example is very nice that if you go to the river, then your all purposes are served. But in the village uh, they are restricted that this well is uh, for this purpose, this well is this purpose, it may be crowded, you have to wait for the opportunity. But the river is open, you can go there and have your business done very nice. That will be summarized in the last verse. Akama sarva kama va moksha kama udharadhi tibrena bhakti yogina jajita paramam purus. That will be the conclusion. Here uh, uh, Simad Bhagavatam is recommending uh, different demigods for different purposes because there are all classes of men, so uh, to take immediate effect, uh, they worship demigods. Kiprang, very soon. Uh, generally, people do not go to worship Krishna and Vishnu because uh, you cannot ask from Krishna anything which is not good for you. Uh, suppose you pray to Krishna on the seaside, Krishna, give me a good fish I want to catch. Krishna will never fulfill your desire. Uh, that is Krishna's message. Because Krishna will not give you facility for possessing anything which will ultimately cause your harm. Krishna knows that if he catches a fish, then he will have to become a fish again to be caught by the same fish. So why shall he give the facility? So, Therefore, our policy is not to ask anything from Krishna. He knows what is good for me. Simply I have to surrender unto him. That's all. Why should I bother him? Give me this, give me that, give me that. No. Not anang, not anang. Here, eh? 
श्री काम ब्यूटिफुल वाइफ काम वन हु वॉन्ट्स देवीन ही शुड वर्स इन गॉड इज दुर्गा दिस इज ए कमेंडेशन बट इट इज काम बट दो आर डिवोट इज दे हैव नो काम अन्ना मिला सीता सुनो अन्ना अन्ना मीन्स आदा दैन कृष्ण सर्विस दे हैव मेड ऑल एवरीथिंग जीरो वी डोंट वॉन्ट ऑल दिस we simply want to serve krishna anna vilasita sunnam gyana karma dana abhritam gyana means knowledge karma means sweet activities uncovered by or untouched by pruti activities and gyana just like in vrindavan All the inhabitants of Vrindavan, they never tried to know Krishna whether he is God. That was not their business. Gyana, the Gyanis, they want to know. Just the Brahma wanted to test whether Krishna is God or not. Indra wanted to test whether the inhabitants of Vrindavan. They never did it. Huh? They think Krishna is our very intimate friend, uh, my beloved son, my lover, my master. Uh, everyone's concentrated love for Krishna in different milieus. That's all. Uh, even when Krishna played wonderful thing, so they simply thought, oh, he might be a demi god. You see. So they never try to analyze Krishna, but their love for Krishna there is no comparison. And that is want. Jnana karma da na abhidham. Whether Krishna is God or not, let me test. You can test, but pure love means whatever Krishna may be, he is my love, my love. मत प्राणनाथ सुसाई वो ना पर यू हैव नो अदर बिजनेस देन टू लव कृष्ण व्हाट एवर ही मे बी ही मे बी गॉड और मे बी व्हाट एवर ही मे दैट इज कॉल अनलाविलासिता सुसंसनम ज्ञान कर्मा धना अमृतम देन व्हाट इज द बिजनेस इफ एवरीथिंग इज सुन्नम सुन्नम इज जीरो नो वी आर नॉट जीरो पॉजिटिव What is that? Anukulle na Krishna nu silanam. Simply uh, cultivate Krishna consciousness favorably. How I can become a lover of Krishna? That is all. Anukulle na Krishna nu silanam. Bhakti ruttama. This is first class devotion. Uh, Of course, we should know Krishna. Otherwise, it may be we may neglect him. This hmm. like we are trying to explain what is duty. Uh, but if one has got unflinching love for the duty, he doesn't require to understand the duty through this astra. Spontaneous love. That's like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said. As soon as he entered the duty room, fainted. Here is my Lord. That is first-class position of a devotee, without any other consideration. Uh, enhance your love for Krishna without any condition. Uh, that is required. So, these worship of different demigods are. Recommended in the scripture, not to mislead him, but to lead him gradually to the higher stage. To lead him gradually to the higher stage, because the demigods have considered the different limbs 
of the Supreme Personality of God. Hmm. Ah. Ah. <clears throat> Jepanna devata vakta jajanti sadhyanita tepi mame bakam teya jajanti abhidipur bakam. Jajanti abhidipur bakam. Just like uh, if you want to serve me, uh, there, there is a routine work how to serve superior. Now, if you touch my hair, you are touching me, but that is not the service. You see? Service means there is routine work. You should touch my feet. Similarly, anywhere go, it is Krishna, because without Krishna there is no other existence. So to worship the demigod, Indirectly worshiping Krishna, but avidhi purvakam, without regulative principles. Uh, jajanti avidhi purvakam. Uh, the same example. Uh, if you want to touch me, so the regulative principle is that you have to touch the lotus feet of your spiritual master. Not that you touch your, touch his head and do like that. You can say, I am touching you. Oh, that's no argument. Uh, you have to touch according to the regulated principle. Uh, similarly, uh, those who are nonsense, all light, you touch the hair of your spiritual master. If you cannot touch the lotus feet, then you touch it. Giving a chance to come in touch so this demigod worship, it is an example given. Demigod worship is recommended in the Vedas. Uh, at least they should gradually understand uh, who is this demigod, why you are worshipping him, how where from he has got this power. Uh, then when one can understand that this Indra, Chandra, and Surya, and Diti, Aditi, and Fire, Lord Shiva, they are all different departmental heads of Krishna's government. The real king is Krishna. Hmm. To understand that. Uh, not that uh, then one could derive all the benefits from one department. No, the different departments are recommended. If you want this, we approach this. If you want this, we approach this. And the conclusion, it will be said, <coughs> the, whatever you want, you go to Krishna. Uh, it all desires will be fulfilled. Tasmin vijñāti sarvam idam vijñātam bhavanti akāma sarva kāma vā mokṣa kāma udāradhi. Let's try him now, keep turn. Now we read the part, but... Purport. There is two modes of worship for different persons, as I read it says in particular subjects. The conditioned soul living within the purview of the material world can have to every physical, materially enjoyable asset, but one can have considerable influence over a particular matter by worshipping a particular demigod, as mentioned above. Ravana was made a very powerful man by worshipping Lord Shiva, and he used to offer severed heads to please Lord Shiva. He became so powerful by the grace of Lord Shiva that all the demigods were afraid of him until he at last challenged the personality of Godhead, Sri Ramachandra, and thus ruined himself. In other, in other words, all such persons who aspire after gaining some or all of the material objects of enjoyment, or the gross materialistic persons, are on the whole less intelligent, as it is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita 7.20. It is said there that those who are bereft of all good sense, for those whose intelligence is withdrawn by the deluding energy of Maya, 
aspire after all sorts of material enjoyments in life by pleasing the respective demigods or by advancing the material civilization under the heading of scientific progress. The real problem of life in the material world is to solve the question of birth, death, old age, and disease. No one wants to change his birthright. No one wants to meet death. No one wants to be old originally. And no one wants diseases. But these problems are solved neither by the grace of any demigod nor by the so-called advancement of material science. In the Bhagavad Gita, as well as in the Srimad Bhagavatam, such less intelligent persons have been described as devoid of all good sense. Shukadeva Goswami says that out of the 8,400,000 species of living entities, the human form of life is rare and valuable. And out of those rare human beings who are conscious of the material problem, and out of those rare human beings, those who are conscious of the material problem are rarer still. And the still more rare persons are those who are conscious of the value of the Shumat Bhagavatam, because it contains the messages of the Lord and his pure devotees. And death is inevitable for everyone, intelligent and foolish. The Rikish Maharaj has been addressed by the Goswami as a Manishi, or a man of highly developed mind, because at the time of death, he left all material enjoyment and completely surrendered unto the lotus feet of the Lord by hearing his messages from the right person, like Shabbat Goswami. But aspiration for material enjoyment by endeavoring persons is condemned. Such aspirations are something like the intoxication of the degraded human society. Intelligent persons should try to avoid it and seek instead the permanent life by returning home back to God.